Donkey Kong 64, a game that I hold near and dear to my heart. I don't really think about DK64 too often, it definitely doesn't come to mind more than what Banjo does. When I think Donkey Kong, and man, this really goes to the majority of the audience watching, when you think of Donkey Kong, you think of the country games, DKC1, Diddy's Conquest, and Dixie Kong's Double Trouble more or less, and that's what usually comes to mind for me. DK64 isn't something I necessarily think about, but when I do, I can't help but reminisce about how good it was. Back in 2015, I played it on the Wii U Virtual Console. I didn't have a Nintendo 64 back then, I was a sad, lonely child. But I did play most of the Nintendo 64 games on the Wii U, or Wii, the Virtual Console is a godsend in my honest opinion. But DK64 was a game that I actually played the most on my Wii U. I just thought it was so much fun. It was a Donkey Kong Banjo-Kazooie. What's not to love? I love Donkey Kong. I love Banjo. Donkey Kong-esque Banjo, sign my ass up, 10-year-old me said. Nowadays, though, it holds a very different reputation. Some people find this game terrible. In fact, some people consider this the worst Donkey Kong game in the mainline series. And I can't help but wonder why. I mean, I went back and played it recently. I got my hands on an authentic Ooh. cartridge, seeing as how I bought a Nintendo 64 a few months back, and I wanted to pick this game up. I just had a nostalgic itch in my asshole, and I had to scratch it. Thanks, dude. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for letting us know. After going back though and playing it, I honestly I don't see what the big fuss is. And definitely after seeing a lot of videos popping up recently talking about how it killed a genre, I can't help but defend this game. Hey yo, what the fuck? So instead of jitting on Donkey Kong 64 like everyone else on YouTube, uh, we're just going to be talking about the game in general and why I feel so nostalgic towards it, as well as little bonus hints here and there and some fun facts. Consider this my Cybershell yeah. Donkey Kong 64 bonus video. Also, I just wanted to talk about Donkey Kong 64, so suck a fart out of my ass. Alright you nerds, time to get some stuff out of the way. Number one, the expansion pack. It's like taxes, it's impossible to avoid. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. The expansion pack thing, the game breaking bug that only stopped whenever you put an expansion pack in the game. It was an easy fix and packed all copies of DK64 with the expansion pack so no one would have to worry about a bug breaking glitch in the game. Yeah, that, that whole thing, that's bullshit. That was made up by Chris Marlowe, one of the game designers of Conker's Bad Fur Day. I believe Chris Marlowe was known for being a serious ball buster within Rareware, so it wouldn't surprise me if he just conjured this up as a way of busting the balls of the developers back then. Rumors spread and someone ended up hearing Chris Marlowe's bullshit story and actually believed it, and thus spread the inevitable rumor across the internet, making everyone believe it. But believe it or not, the stupid ass expansion pack rumor is not true. In fact, DK64 was built around the expansion pack the entire time time, back when it was considered a Nintendo 64 disk drive game. And speaking of the Nintendo 64 disk drive, what's up with that piece of shit, huh? Why does that have anything to do with Donkey Kong? Well, believe it or not, during DK64's development, originally the game was supposed to release on the Nintendo 64 disk drive, much like other Nintendo 64 titles that released, some just got straight up cancelled because of it. But seeing as how the Nintendo disk drive will suck serious wet ass, it was scrapped and was decided to move all current projects to Nintendo 64 actual hardware, or just cancel them outright. This is why titles like Earthbound 64, and some other games I can't think about right now, never released. But yeah, DK64 was one of these disk drive titles that was pushed to the N64 hardware. I believe some people thought Project Dream, Banjo-Kazooie's prototype name, was also considered for the disk drive, but according to developers, that just wasn't true. Speaking of Banjo-Kazooie, most of the developers of DK64 were passed on to work on DK64 as soon as Banjo wrapped up development, which is why Donkey Kong 64 shares so much resemblance to Banjo-Kazooie. But yeah, it, it kind of made sense, I mean, Banjo-Kazooie and DK64, as far as gameplay goes, it's practically the same game. It's a 3D puzzle platform and collect-a-thon adventure game. But with all that random bullshit out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this game, starting with the story. So just like many other Nintendo 64 games, DK64 doesn't necessarily 
necessarily have a very thickening plot. I mean, it's nothing too special. It's a f Nintendo 64 game. What did you expect? A J.R. Tolkien-esque story, Lord of the Rings DK64? Were you expecting something like that? But yeah, the story is pretty simple. King K rolls back to his old antics once again. This time, instead of wanting to just kidnap some apes and steal a banana horde, he wants to blow up an entire island. King K. Rule has this new device called the Blastomatic. Unfortunately, though, during his trip to DK Isle, where he was going to blast the island, the ship crashed and it jacked up the Blastomatic, meaning the machine had to repair. In the meantime, K. Rule's cronies kidnapped Diddy Kong, Tiny Kong, Lanky Kong, and Chunky Kong, some of the playable characters you'll be on in this adventure, also stealing Donkey Kong's hoard of golden bananas. It's up to Donkey Kong to recollect all of his golden bananas, save his friends, and stop King K. Rule once again from taking over DK Isle, or more like absolutely decimating it. The story may be a bit bare bones, but what about the gameplay itself? Oh boy. <laughs> So I guess while we talk about gameplay, I'm just gonna rip this bandaid off. Let's go ahead and talk about the three critiques. The three biggest reasons why people hate this game so much. One, too many collectibles. Too many collectibles, they said. There's just too many collectibles in DK64. It just takes forever to 100% the game. Well, I mean, yeah, there is a lot of items in DK64. It, I mean, it won a record, a Guinness Book World Record, for the most items in a 3D platform game. That's telling you something. I won't deny that. But as far as just beating the game goes, it doesn't take that many collectibles to beat it. Come on, let's, let's just think about this for a second. If you're someone that has never played DK64, and you're considering trying it, are you really going to try 100%ing the game on your first run? Of course not. No one in their right mind would try 100%ing a 3D platforming collectathon on their first run in order to beat DK64. 64's campaign, it takes a little over 1,000 items to collect, which is around the same amount of collectibles as there is in Banjo-Kazooie. So in my opinion, that argument is just kinda shit. And if you really want to 100% the game, if you're so dead set, then you have no reason to bitch because you're the one wasting your time 100%ing a game that has over 4,000 items to collect. Am I being a little too defensive? <laughs> well, guess what? I don't care. So yeah, too many collectibles. What's next? Backtracking. A lot of people hate this, and I'll be honest. I can see why people hate this a lot. After going back and playing DK64, I can see why people find going back, tagging another Kong, just to go get one objective or a golden banana depending on what you're doing, can be a little tedious, but I don't think it's something that completely hinders gameplay. Really, I feel like the developers knew backtracking was a serious issue, but I feel like the game's built around it, much like Banjo-Kazooie. There's just so many collectibles and so much to do, that even if you are backtracking to another place, there's always something you can do along the way from point A to point B, regardless if you've already been there or not. There's always going to be something there. Now some people may hear this and think, that doesn't make any sense. And to that I say, screw you. Tagging Kongs. Some people find the five Kong dynamic a bit over the top. Five playable characters, all with separate movesets. Some people may find that a bit overwhelming or completely overboard. If there's one word I can describe the five Kong dynamic mechanic in this game, it's just ambitious. It's a very ambitious idea, and honestly, it's one of the main reasons why I love this game so much. Sure, there's different color-coded bananas. You're playing as Donkey Kong and you see some red bananas? Well, too bad, you have, to, you have to go get Diddy Kong to collect those red bananas. Oh, you're playing as Diddy Kong, you just collected up all those red bananas, but now you see some purple bananas? Well, you're gonna have to hop back into that tag barrel and jump in as Tiny. Like, I can see why people find that frustrating and a bit tedious. But uh, again, I don't find this an issue. This isn't something that bothers me. Maybe I'm just biased. Maybe I'm just retarded. Either way, I feel like it's a mix of both. One thing I think is really cool is all of the cool weapons and moves each Kong gets. DK gets a coconut gun. Diddy gets the peanut poppers. Tiny gets the feather crossbow thing. Chunky gets a pineapple bazooka. Oh yeah, Linky gets a great pea shooter. It's probably the lamest one in the game. There's over eight worlds in DK64, all of which are just as interesting and luscious as the next. I definitely think that's one of DK64's strong points, is its environments. And DK64 is no exception. There's a jungle, there's an Aztec temple, there's a toy factory, there's a haunted ship. Point is, there's a lot of great worlds in DK64, and I also think a lot of the enemies are really cool. Another thing that I love about DK64, the f Kremlings. Interior crocodile alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. King K. Rule and his Kremlin Armada is definitely one of the shining factors of this game. King K. Rule makes every Donkey Kong Country game he's in fantastic, even the shitty ones. 
Yeah, I went there, pussy. King K. Rool is just such a charming character, and once again, in DK64, he doesn't disappoint. He even has voice acting. He did a pretty good job, too. I imagine this is what K. Rool sounds like. Not to mention the final battle slaps, too. In classic Rareware fashion, DK64 goes out with a bang. This final boss is a boxing match with K. Rool, which he goes by the boxing name King Crusha K. Rool. The boss fight consists of the five Kongs, and you have to utilize each of their abilities. Did you know that you can glitch the shit out of DK64? Yeah, one reason why I love this game, another reason why, is the speedrunning community, because their exploits in this game is absolutely batshit insane. If you look online and you just type in DK64 speedrun, you're gonna find some of the wackiest YouTube videos the platform has to offer. Some of these videos are just absurd, like how do you even do that? DK64 is infamous for how many bugs and glitches there are in the game, so it's no surprise the speedrunning community is bustling with a bunch of different runs, consisting of different ways to exploit the game. It just surprises me to see all these creative ways for someone to play the game. It's just really cool. And while I may not speedrun this game, I definitely would like to go and try some of these glitches, like clipping under the aisle in Crocodile Isle and hopping in King K. Rule's control room. But yeah, I feel like that's really all I can talk about with DK64, at least all that comes to mind. I love this game. It's definitely one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games, and it's my third favorite Donkey Kong game of all time. It's just a lot of fun for me. If you don't like the game, I respect your opinion, but also don't. It's a charming little game that, yes, has flaws, the backtracking, the overabundance of collectibles, the recycling minigames, the slippery controls, the shit camera, so many things that suck about this game, but just as many things are great about this game. The Kongs, the enemies, the moves, the guns, the different worlds. While there may be a lot of things to hate about this game, there are just as many to love. And I personally feel like DK64 is a worthy contender for your Nintendo 64 library. And even if you don't have a Nintendo 64, and you are interested in playing this game, specifically with the Tag Anywhere Kong mechanic, ROM hack that was made by Kaze MUR. This is definitely a ROM hack that definitely benefits gameplay, so if you do want to emulate the game, then be my guest, but definitely do it with this method in mind. I'll leave a link in the description below. Another reason why I wanted to make this video was because I watched Cybershell's video on DK64, and it made me want to play the game again. So thank you, Cybershell. I salute you, and all of your weird-ass Sonic profile picture glory. Which... Just go watch Cybershell, you pussy.